Hey everybody, I wanted to go through a couple TikToks here. Um, these are sort of the lovely women that you're seeing on TikTok. And I always find these so bizarre because I, when I watch these, I think to myself, what on earth, like why would you post something like this on social media? It's sort of like these women modern women will call them because they're not all young but they feel the need to just like document every aspect of their life and then put that out there on the internet for some reason so these are sort of a it's sort of a compilation of cringe women of tiktok videos um <laughs> I always find it illuminating to look at these because these same women will cry and complain about things in their in the way that their life is, but there's no responsibility. They're not willing to take any responsibility for anything. And then they do the same thing repeatedly, I guess expecting different results. And, you know, it's sort of the definition of insanity. So let's begin. Let's take a look at this first one. Welcome to feminism, take a look around. Centuries of oppression, now we really must break ground. Okay, so right off the bat, this is um, a feminist. And these theater school kids are absolutely annoying. Nina Jankowitz, the new DHS uh, disinformation czar, she's another one of these oh, I'm so quirky and cool, like theater kids. She put out a very similar video like this about Russian disinformation. And, um, well, it was as uh, horrifying as this one. But, um, you know, it's like these women don't, they don't understand why no one wants to marry them. I mean, is there anything attractive about this at all? We've had waves of liberation, but the tide's not yet in. If you think our fight's over, boy, where do I begin? Welcome to feminism, come and take a seat. Shall we start with the glass ceiling or harassment in the street? Okay, these women always talk about this glass ceiling, my glass ceiling. It it literally doesn't exist. They they have nothing to complain about. They're very pampered. They lead a decadent lifestyle. They want for absolutely nothing. They have hordes of beta men constantly white knighting for them. These women are not being constantly harassed in the streets. That is absurd. And it's always like really uh, unattractive women that claim that they get harassed constantly, sexual harassment constantly. And I'm not saying this woman in particular is unattractive. Um, I'm just saying, generally speaking, it is those kinds of women who complain about so-called constant sexual harassment. The media is biased, even against our chests. Have any of you heard of the Bechdel test? Uh, this is absolutely incorrect. The media is not biased against women's chests. The media is constantly uh, giving these women and their delusional nonsense attention. They feed into their need, their constant need for validation and attention. They're constantly propping these women up. Welcome to feminism, what would you prefer? Will you join us, fight for women's rights, or deny shit occurs? What rights do they not have? I mean, that's sort of the question that I, I would like to pose to these women. What rights do you not have that a man has? Because I don't think that you want equal rights to a man. Because you guys never want to take responsibility for your behavior. Just like with um, the women who were at the Supreme Court um, protesting over the draft opinion on Roe versus Wade, whining about wanting to um, murder babies. Their argument is that, well, someone, you know, I one of these women is a single mother and she says, well, I have a kid and no one's paying me. And so, okay, whose fault is that? She's a single mother, and the baby's dad obviously isn't around. And 
there at no point was there any kind of self-reflection or accountability or taking responsibility for her own behavior. I mean, that's what bothers me, I think, the most about these kinds of women. It's just this, they live in an alternate reality. And a lot of them, they just want to, they want to feel like they're rebelling or like they're fighting for something, but there is nothing that they lack. They're not oppressed. If they want to talk about oppression, why don't they go someplace like North Korea? We're scrappy, we're daring, and bursting with rage. It's time that everybody got more engaged. Oh my god, yeah. They're all bursting with rage, that's for sure. Welcome to feminism, center women's needs. That means smaller crush less dummies and paid maternity leave. Okay, most of these women are offered paid maternity leave, uh, but the, the thing is, is that, well, sometimes you have to make sacrifices once you become a parent. You have to make a choice. Do you want to be a stay-at-home mother or do you want to be a career woman in the workforce? Like, sometimes you don't get to do both. Smaller crash test dummies, really? Is that really a major concern? That's what what you're fighting for? Oh, that sounds really rough. Our domestic labor should have value too. And would focus on intersectionality because this is all way worse for women of color and queer women. Are you getting it? What? How? In what way? The, oh my god, they just say buzzwords and there's zero critical thinking. And by the way, look at the eyes. That, my friends, is what we call crazy eyes. If you see a woman who looks like this, Run. Yes. Hold on to your hats because sexism still ends careers and there is a pay gap. And all of our doctors have failed us so. Medical misogyny kills us, you know. How? In what way? Cite some evidence. What is medical misogyny? What pay gap? There is no pay gap. This, this is utter, complete nonsense. No more child weddings, no more beddings from drug drinks, no more selling ex exposures, and no more honor killings. Who's being honor killed? What child weddings? Is she talking about in the West? Because that's where she lives. Pro divorces, pro abortions, we won't let them take our laws, and we will protect all our daughters from the sordid and the bullshit. And oh, wow. Of course, pro abortion, so she's okay with killing unborn women in the womb. That's fine, guys. And of course she's pro-divorce. Why wouldn't she be? No more fucked up beauty standards we would like to age and not be told we have no worth if we don't get you laid. Well, who, who who's perpetuating these beauty standards? Isn't it other women? I mean, where does that come from? Women's magazines? It, really? Virgins are a construct and so is a slut. No more tampon taxes, no more men's did I mention that it's everywhere, all of the time? The patriarchy's everywhere, uh, all of the time. Sorry that you think it's boring and that we just whine. We but it's really everywhere, all of the time. Clearly not, because you're allowed to run your stupid mouth. Did I mention that it's everything, all of the time? The patriarchy's everywhere, all of the time. Sorry that you think it's boring and that we just whine. But it's really everywhere, all of the time. It's really not. Let's address the men with the what do you bring to the table analogy. Oh, here we go. Okay, so going from one delusional woman right to the next, um, you know, I find this interesting because I often have asked this question myself. When these women complain all the time uh, about men not wanting to commit to them and men not wanting to be with them, you know, you have to ask yourself, well, what do you bring to the table? Why would a man want to commit to you? Let's listen to what she has to say. First of all, sir, if you're the type of man that asks this kind of question, what do you bring to the table, aside from your dirty laundry, salty attitude, and inconsistent tendencies? You bring all your shit to our table and expect us to clean it all up. And in some cases, we have your baggage, your insults, and your nonsense screwing up our perfect centerpiece. How's that for an analogy? Listen, just because- Listen to how these women talk about men. I mean, did you hear that? There's, they have no respect for men. Why would a man respect you if this is how you talk about men? Because you brought something to our table does not mean it was desirable. Let's just get that straight. 
But I'm assuming you're talking about money, which is funny because you're usually the same people that expect us to maintain the age old gender role of homemaker, all while pulling up our bootstraps and being the breadwinner. Don't know anyone expects us to cook the bread if we have to go out and earn it, but what do I know? Hey, maybe we can put the oven on wheels and bring it to the office. So what she's complaining about is, oh, we have to, you know, we have to do chores and we have to work. Well, whose fault is that? Whose fault is it that inflation is so bad, the cost of living has gone up so much and wages have stayed low? Whose fault is that? Isn't that the fault, perhaps, of the political system and not a one man? It's not his fault. Um, you know, these women expect men to make six figures, to be six foot tall, to be fit and in shape and handsome and to do everything for them. It's like they're, they're so delusional. Their standards are so outside of reality. They don't understand it. And again, you know, if you look at what these women are, are bringing to the table, it's not much. And yet they constantly complain like this. But in that case, I think you they're, it's they're so entitled, they're so arrogant. To realize that we built the table, secured it, and set it. And you want to ask what we brought to it? After we bought the food, cooked the food, and cleaned up after it? All you have to do is chew and swallow. I know you'd like to be recognized for it, but I don't think so. See, here's the thing about living in 2021. Women are more than capable of being independent. We had our table stacked. And yet you still want a man, don't you? I'm an independent woman. I don't need no man. That's what all of these women say, and yet they're all angry that they don't have the Chad. You know, they all want a man. Oh, we don't need no man. Well, you clearly want one. Long before you showed up to sit at it. See, you can't ask us what we brought to the table if you refuse to open your eyes and see what we're carrying. But you don't want that. You want to deflect all sense of accountability by invalidating your partner's contributions. And you're... What, who is she talking about here? She's speaking in these like generalizations, but it sounds, I think, pretty obvious that she's talking about someone in particular. This sounds like a you problem. Table analogy implies a sense of superiority over the person supplying the majority of the income. But duality is not an option here. You can't. So she's claiming that the women su are supplying the majority of the income um, in whose household? Like, what, what are you referencing? Who? Generally speaking, I do not think that women are making more than men. And if they are, well, I guess your little pay gap argument isn't real, is it? Respect to all the benefits of a homemaker if you want a financial contribution of greater or equal value. And if you think we can do both, then the question then presents itself of why can't you? So if you're sitting at our table and getting all your needs met as a result of what's on top of it, don't insult us by asking what we brought to it. Because here's the thing, if someone's living as an individual, there's only a single contributor to the lifestyle, but in a relationship, there are two people and there should be an equal distribution. But just because someone's contribution doesn't mirror yours, doesn't mean it's not of equal value. And every time we try and take a contribution from you to try and lessen your burden, we get a- So she just contradicted what she said. If people have different contributions, but that doesn't mean it's of, of a different value or, or not an equivalent value, then what are you complaining about? What are you complaining about with a the man then that maybe earns less money? Isn't he contributing in other ways and aren't those ways valuable? Accused of slacking on another one. Yet at the same time, you'll tell us we're expecting too much if we ask for emotional support after you worked all day. You can't hold us to a standard that you yourself refuse to fulfill. So I'll end with this. But you have no problem doing that to men. Okay. Either way. Asking your partner this is incredibly insulting, whether they're male or female. But if you're wondering why you're not getting 100% of their effort, maybe it's because you diminish everything it consists of. Just saying. Oh, Let's address she's smart. We got big brain here, guys. The most eye-opening thing I ever learned about men was from my college human sexuality class. College human sexuality class. So you already know. <laughs> you already know going into this that this is going to be nonsense because that's where, what it's coming from. A college human sexuality class. Um, do I need to say more? Okay. That's what the professor told us that men don't actually like women. Not all men. Gee, I wonder why. Could there maybe be something that women are doing that 
men don't like. Just saying. But that thought does not even register. Because then you'd have to self-reflect and have some accountability for your behavior. Oh, we wouldn't want that. And sure, but hang in. He said that the way that our society socializes boys to, quote, become men is not to tell them how to be men. It's just to teach them how to not be women. Okay, so this argument that men aren't taught to be men. In, in one regard, she's correct. There are every time a man tries to assert himself as a man, he's told toxic masculinity, blah, blah, blah. Men are uh, feminized in our society. That's what she's not saying, though. She's saying, oh, men are just taught to be the opposite of what a woman is, and they're not really taught to be a real man. Okay, that's not true, though. Men are taught to act like women. They're taught to be feminized. That is why women aren't happy. Uh, it's just like, whoo, how do you not see this? Don't cry, be a man. Don't be a pussy, be a man. Don't be weak, be a man. Don't be sensitive, be a man. Don't. No, society is telling men to be sensitive, to be caring, to act like a woman, to act like a female. That is what they're being taught. They're telling men, oh, you need to go to sensitivity training. You need to go to equity, diversity, blah, blah, blah classes. They're, t they're telling them literally to be more like women. Not the opposite, as she's trying to say. Like those things. Those are girl things. And the tool we use to do the, that kind of socializing, to steer them away from feminine things, is shame. What? Oh, my God. I just... It, to, do you not see this, the stupidity of what this woman is saying? But of course, she's right. She thinks she knows what she's talking about. I mean, this to me is stunning. How do you not see that it's the exact opposite of what you're claiming? Men are not shamed for being sensitive or being like women. No, they are shamed for being like men, for toxic masculinity. And you just can't go your whole life being told that the worst thing you could do is be like a woman. And oh, she had to put a little thing in here. This concept is predicated on the idea of gender binary, which is why I'm speaking in binary terms. She had to put that little caveat in there in case you guys were wondering. I expect to actually like women at the end of that. But they are also taught that their sexual attractiveness to women and their ability to get women is a status symbol in front of other men. So they will sexually pursue women, but they don't actually like them as people. What? <laughs> what? Oh my God. What is she talking about? Women are attracted to men because of their status. Men are driven to act like that because that is what women are attracted to. What are you talking about? Uh, oh, but they don't actually like women. Well, what kind of men are you going for? This is how patriarchal masculinity socializes men. Oh, here it is. Patriarchal masculinity. Oh my god. None of this makes any sense, does it? It's just word salad nonsense. And why shame, violence, and disgust are so intricately linked. Oh my god. Wow, guys. Um... I don't, I, I, I think that clip speaks for itself. Moving on to the next one. Oh, that was real lovely. That was really nice. You know, why, why would anyone want to commit to a young woman if this is what they're going to get? What is that? Why would any man be attracted to that? Um... I don't think they would be, but uh, maybe this is why men are staying away from modern women. Is there anything attractive about this? This behavior? I don't think so. I don't think if we stopped wearing pads and tampons that they would have to eventually give us free ta pads and tampons. Hear me out because it makes sense. We don't have to wear Oh, and look at the lovely hand tattoo she has. She's... I mean, what a disgusting thing to say. What is wrong with these women? Is it, it's like mental illness or something? And once again, it's like this desire to broadcast and put out to the world 
every bizarre random thought that goes into your head who would put something like this out on social media who even thinks about something like this disgusting and gross ads or tampons like they right like that is not law like we can free bleed right free bleed at the local 7-eleven um wow what a concept guys we've got a big brain here as well another smart independent woman free bleed bleed free bleed at the movie theater they're gonna have to eventually give in there's gonna be so much blood everywhere they're gonna have to give it to us for free um i'm down i think it's a good idea of course you do i mean how disgusting no wonder young men don't want to get married to women no wonder they don't even want to date these girls who would who would want to make that a wife i mean my goodness dish this if you have a subtle feminist power move that you do on the regular as a woman bartender i do have a few of these uh stored up my sleeve oh of course of course here we go and one of my favorites is when a man is ordering his beer in like an aggressively manly way what does that mean an aggressively manly way like a man just acts like a man and somehow that is offensive to her what? And it, you guys, if this was the other way around, if there was a male bartender that said, oh, you know, when a woman comes in and it is aggressively ordering a drink, I mean, this is this is how I mess with her. This is my power move. These women would be crying about it. Oh, these mean men. They're so rude and abusive to women. But this is perfectly acceptable. Right, because like, there's a difference between, hi, can I get a Bud Light? And, yeah, give me a beer and a glass, whatever. A Bud Light, I don't know, put it in a glass, I'll drink it. Um, I just want to, <laughs> I'm going to venture to say that this hasn't actually happened to her. I don't think people have talked like this to her unless maybe they're already highly intoxicated. Okay, you're a bartender, it's your job. This is just ridiculous and women can be just as gross just as rude when they're intoxicated at the bar as well in fact women i think tend to be um more rude to wait staff than men i was i did fine dining for several years when i was a young lady and women were a lot ruder to me than men i'm a man bleh. right so when that type of guy orders his drink and he's just really proving he's a man i love responding with oh yeah cute drink or oh yeah oh so she tries to emasculate him in front of his friends if she perceives him to be too aggressive in the way he orders a drink let's just emasculate a man and that's perfectly fine with these women Ah, oh, you're fancy let me grab that for you or ooh, love here you go so condescending rude arrogant or if it's butt light specifically oh yes a rice beer you got it it leaves them feeling rattled I'll no it, it leaves them feeling emasculated how nice i'll tell you that <laughs> this is whoa what is that cackle at the end there this is like these these women are mentally ill Okay, it's mental illness. If men can't control themselves, seeing women in skirts. Oh dear God! Oh my God! This one is completely mentally ill, completely unhinged. Just look at the outfit and what men can't control themselves when they see women in skirts. Are you talking about immigrants? What are you talking about? Who let them control whole countries? Uh, there's a lot of women in, in politics and Western government. There are a lot of women running whole countries like Angela Merkel, right? W what is this? Oh my God, I swear. It's so tiresome. It's all so tiresome. Let's look at the next one though, because it keeps going. I need feminism because I intend on marrying rich and I- <laughs> Oh. Oh, this is, this is lovely. Obviously, it's a lesbian. Can't do that if my wife and I are making 75 cents for every dollar a man makes. 
When women wear makeup, they're basically lying to us. I don't see why I'm being blamed for a man stupid enough to think I have gold eyelids. That's not what they're talking about, and she knows this. What they're talking about is women who use all of this foundation, concealer, contouring, and highlighting. They can literally change the shape of their freaking face. Um, if you just Google, like, women before and after uh, heavy makeup or makeup pictures, you can see just how, uh, cr like, different women can make themselves appear just with makeup. We're not talking about gold eyelids or something like that. We're talking about fake eyebrows, fake eyelashes, um, fake lip shape, fake nose shape through contouring and highlighting. That's what we're talking about. She knows this. She's just being an ass. A man once got mad because my mom asked me for a tampon in Punjabi and demanded we speak English. So my mom asked him if he had a tampon and he ran away. That's disgusting. Fathers, you can't dress men. They only want one thing. Uncles, boys are trying to play you. Cousins, you better not be dating those boys. Brothers, they just want to get inside your pants. Girls, men are trash. Men, men are trash. So, I mean, this... What kind of men are you going after, though? I mean... I don't think that all fathers, uncles, cousins, and brothers talk like that. I, th I think that about men generally, I think they're talking about a certain kind of man, not all of them. And collective gasp, how could you say that? I only hang out with guys because they never start drama. Um, please read a history textbook. Oh, I, you know, the liberal Western so-called educated woman is the most obnoxious creature in the world. They are so arrogant. They think that they're so smart and they just come off sounding stupid. Here she is being dramatic, but claiming that men have drama and start drama all the time. Okay. Bisexual women disclose their orientation. Straight men with barely enough sexual stamina for one woman. I love threesome. So once again, uh, these women just love to put men down, to call them trash, to emasculate them, disrespect them, and then cry about how they're not treated great by men. I wonder why. <laughs> Some female squids wear fake testicles to avoid the advancements of male squids. What does that even mean? And what does that have to do with anything? Oh, gotcha. <laughs> this is what we call innovation. Wow. It, it, it's just, it really is stunning. And of course, you know, she's a lesbian. I don't know what man in their right mind would be attracted to that. It's not all men. You know that it goes. Oh, uh, here, here's another lovely woman. Uh, just mocking mocking men right off the bat both ways right it happens to men too yes it does but do you know what the difference is with you it is individual with us it is systematic no it isn't it absolutely isn't all of you women are propped up you're all catered to everybody fawns all over you you get constant validation and attention from beta men, your beta orbiters, your white knights, everybody, including culture, society, your teachers, the media, tells you that you're never wrong. You're always right. We have to believe all women. You are not systematically oppressed. It happens in family. It happens multiple times in public. It happens openly in school with doctors, with teachers, with authority figures. Okay, guess what? There are school teachers, female ones, who have sex with young men, who molest and sexually assault them. Nobody talks about that. But there are female teachers who get arrested for doing this stuff. It is not just women that that happens to. It happens even on live TV. And no. What? Uh, what? What is she? What does? What happens on live TV? She doesn't. She doesn't even say what she's talking about. She just speaks in these stupid generalizations. So you you can't even call her on her bullshit because she doesn't say what she's talking about. It's just oh my god. Oh, by saying this, I'm in no way, shape, or form belittling male victims. Yes, you are. But do you know what I found interesting? 
that the only time when you speak about male suffering is when you defend yourself when we speak up. What? What are you talking about? Who? The only time. So what does what does she actually mean by that? Then she's just invalidating any male victims of uh, abuse or assault. Because what she claims that the, it only gets brought up when they're talking about female abuse. Well, why is that? <laughs> why why do you get more airtime? Why are you more deserving of people talking about it than men? If you truly care about male victims and male suffering, then make videos about it. People do though, and here you are invalidating that. I am so sorry that I talk about the systematic oppression of women that doesn't exist and is completely fabricated and made up. Because what I'm talking about is not happening since days, since months, or since years. It happened since the beginning of time. Um, so did, I'm sorry, did men just start getting abused and assaulted days or months or years ago? That wasn't a thing before. Does she s understand how stupid she sounds? Let's look at the next beauty. This is going to be really upsetting for a lot of people. <laughs> okay, so you know it's going to be stupid. When they start a video saying something like that, they want you to know they're going to say something controversial. Especially certain types of men. But working and making an income is an important contribution to the survival and lifestyle and comfort of your family, but it is not a contribution to your relationship. What? What? What is she talking about? How? In what way? How is that not contributing? And it is certainly not a part of relationship give and take or maintenance. How? You're, he's maintaining your lifestyle. She says, you can expect a contribution to the comfort and functionality of your household in return, but it's also not equitable division of labor. There's these stupid buzzwords that these women are, it's just pumped into their heads for one person to work outside the home and the other handle all responsibilities at home, especially when that includes children. Oh, so I guess men just don't do anything around the house, right? They work, they, they come home and what? They just like plop on the couch and say, give me dinner. That's bullshit. You know, these men are probably managing the finances as well, because let's be honest, most women are not responsible and can't handle these things, but they like to act like they're running everything and men are just working. Well, guess what? Working is hard and stressful also. How is that not fair? What does an equitable division of labor even mean? So when you say, I go to work and support this family, and in return, I need these things physically and emotionally from you in the relationship. That is just buying companionship from your... No, it's not. It's expecting to be treated with dignity and respect and compassion. I mean, these... Uh, these women disgust me. I do not know who in their right mind would want to marry somebody that thinks like this. Uh, it, it just is stunning to me. No wonder you, people don't want to marry young women anymore. Just look at how toxic their mindset is. Your partner. If you want to talk about what you need from your partner, emotionally, physically, spiritually, like the mo emotional and mental labor of the relationship. She calls that labor. <laughs> Emotionally supporting your partner is now labor, guys. Who's the one who thinks transactionally? It certainly sounds like her. She's keeping a tally and she has to get equal, you know, things in return. Why, why don't you just be nice just to be nice? Why do you have to get something in return for it? I don't understand why people think this way. And then just look at her little comments here. Working and financially contributing to a household doesn't entitle anyone to having their emotional and physical needs met. Then what's the purpose of having a wife and a child in the first place? What, what man would want to support a woman and kids and then come home and get treated like a piece of shit? Like, what? Oh, uh, honey, I'm home. All right, bend over. It's time for you. It's time for your daily ass raping. 
you know, let me, uh, let me step on your dick. It's time for your daily ball compression. Like, oh yeah, I'm sure men are just dying for that. My goodness. Working in income has no place in the discussion about your relationship needs. Yes, in fact, it does. Then you need to talk about what you are offering emotionally, physically. So you have to offer something to get something. People, women like her, they don't just do something to be nice. They want something in return. She's the one thinking transactionally, but then accuses a man of buying companionship. What a sick woman spiritually in the mental and emotional labor labor it's, right it's labor to to love someone is labor because she doesn't actually love her husband she sees him as like a, a resources and she'll go from one man to the next if there's another man that makes a little bit more money is a little bit more higher status she'll leave her husband and her kids to go be with that man J just listen to her Let's look at the next beauty. Method has worked for me for years. Every time I start dating a new guy, I... Oh, this one is super mentally ill. A again, I ask myself, who thinks like this? But I've been following the Johnny Depp Amber Heard saga, and she is someone who does stuff like this. Uh, she goes, thanks, uh, Tinks, please make the ick list. I'm so obsessed with these types of vids. So she, what she is doing is what she calls an ick list. It's when she meets a man... She immediately creates a folder where, where she starts documenting every little thing he does that she thinks is icky or she doesn't like. Um, who does stuff like that? Why not make a folder of things you like or things that you are grateful for? Don't you think that would be a little healthier? But like Amber Heard was doing this to Johnny Depp. The entire time they were in a relationship together, she was recording him when he'd be like vomiting in the bathroom, like at the worst, lowest point of his life as he's going through like opiate withdrawals and he's sick. She's out there recording the audio and saving it. Why? For what purpose? Why are you taking pictures? Why are you recording audio? She's like building a blackmail folder on this guy. So, so in case something happens, she can use it as ammunition. People who think like that are sick in the head. And this is one of them. I make an ick list on my phone. Obviously, you all know what an ick is. And you know when you're dating someone new and they do something that's kind of weird, but you let it slide, but you definitely remember it. I like to catalog those things to use as emotional ammunition. Now, emotional blackmail. She calls it emotional ammunition, but what it is is emotional blackmail and it's disgusting. Now, you can use the ick list for many different things. If you feel yourself getting too attached too quickly, you can review the ick list. Or if something bad happens, they ghost you or it doesn't work out, you can also review the ick list. This method works best for people who are very affected by icks, and I really get affected by that. And look, icks are personal. You don't have to defend your ick list to your friend. For example, one you don't have to defend your ick list to your friends. Yeah, because they're telling you like, bitch, you're crazy. One guy I was seeing, he held his fork in a really, really weird way. Oh, okay, guys. You better be careful about the way you hold your fork. Who thinks like this? That is insane. These women are nuts. They're nuts. You don't know what you're going to do that's going to set them off. It can be something apparently as small as holding your fork in a way that she doesn't like. How do you meet that kind of standard? Like, these women want to be miserable. They don't want to be happy. This is a choice. She's choosing to be negative, to see the worst in people. It's really fucked up. I didn't want to think about it or make it an issue until he was a giant dick to me. And I took out the ick list. I remember it all the time. Uh, uh, you know, she, here's the thing. She says, oh, he was a giant dick to, to her. What was she doing, though? We never hear. There's never accountability. You not. You will not once hear any of these women say that they've ever done anything wrong. I mean, what did you do to this man that made him treat you badly that made him act like a dick maybe it was because you were documenting every little thing he did and bitching about it yeah i'd be a dick to you too if you were fucking complaining about the way i hold a fork you freak i'm saying he was holding the fork weird and it made our breakup a little easier the ick list is there for you oh so self-delusion it made our breakup easier because i could just lie to myself and say well you know he was an asshole the way he held that fork so yeah i can feel better about it you to use as you see fit. It's just a good thing to have in your hip pocket. Method is worth. You're a freak. Okay, so 
Oh my god. Let's move. Let's just go to the next one. The only thing poured about me, silly, is my vision. Okay. This one, I can't tell if she is trolling or not. Um, I put this in here just because I actually thought it was kind of funny. She does these videos where she talks about being like a, a sugar baby, having a sugar daddy, and she kind of talks about like be, wanting to be rich and wealthy and stuff. I, I can't tell if this is just comedy and it's funny or if she actually believes it. So I don't want to, I don't want to put her down because if this is just trolling, it is epic. It's pretty funny. <laughs> My life's so difficult when Sugar Daddy's at work, he expects me to tan in this pool all by myself. At 5 o'clock, you scheduled an appearance to help out at the homeless shelter. Baby, my ex-boyfriend used to live at his mother's house. I've done enough helping the homeless charity for one year. Please leave me alone. What's your favorite color? Green, like money. I just found out that my boyfriend cheated on me. What do I do? Just tell him, don't worry, baby. If you're going to cheat on me, you better be good at cheating death. I just got rejected. What do I do? Why are you even worrying about that? Please, baby, not everyone has expensive taste. What do I do when that guy expects me to pay the bill? Oh, I'm a feminist until the bill comes. Uh, tell him that the relationship should be 50-50. He pays the bills and you look pretty. What do I do now? Go find rich husband. Okay, so <laughs> I, I really think she's just kind of trolling and being funny. So the guy inviting me over for dinner is. Okay, here. I don't want to be mean, but what is with some of these camera angles? I don't understand people who hold the phone this way when they're filming themselves, so it makes their head look like a freaking watermelon or a potato or something. And it makes her lips look super, like, enlarged. And she's wearing fake eyelashes. Like, we all know that, okay? But it's just such a weird angle. I don't. It's not an attractive angle, ladies. Please do not ever. If you're gonna film a video of yourself, please don't hold the camera in this way. We don't need to see your nose in like your face like this. Please, it's just not a flattering angle. Please. I almost got there and I got excited. I'm like, what do you mean you can have an evil day? And he says sausages, and I'm like, okay, that sounds pretty good. Okay, how much you want to bet that didn't actually happen? <laughs> Just saying. Let's go to the next one. Wife, haters. Oh, here, here's a perfect example of the shallowness, the narcissism, and the arrogance of the modern young woman. Going on a date with my sugar daddy. Look at the tattoos on her arms. Look at the roots, the dark roots in her bleached hair. First, she's got to get ready. Can I have some money? So she's dating a, a man who is obviously old enough to be her father. He asks her how much. Want some Gucci, bitch, I might be a scary. She says, I don't know. I'm like me, my wrist ain't looking icy. Charging by the minute, cause my So he's gotta give her a hundred bucks. Yeah, I be pricey. Yeah, I be with a boss. Yeah. Then he's gotta give her two twenties. Um, this is just pathetic. Any man who is this desperate, please stop. Stop. Why are you letting a woman treat you like this? You know, women, they, these women complain about men objectifying them. What is she doing to this man? He's just a wallet to her. She doesn't care about his personality. All right, we'll go to the next one. There is something I think about all the time when I am thinking about how men view intimacy. Oh, God. Here we go. And I don't remember who said it, but I always remember... You ask a five-year-old boy who their best friend is, and they say, Jack, we do everything together. You ask a girl who's your best friend, and they say, Christina, I tell her everything. Yeah, because women talk a lot. It's what they do. Men are more action-oriented. That's just how they are. And that... Like, you know how men are like, oh, that's my best friend. I'm like, he doesn't even know your birthday doesn't know your birthday. When's the last time you said, hey, how's your day? How's your heart? How's your heart, ch heart chakra? Okay, I'm just gonna say it. 
Anytime you see a woman with orange hair talk about a heart chakra or a star sign, run. They don't know. I know all about your heart chakra. Like, well, you're a girl. That's what you do. Who said that? You been talking to Christina? <laughs> Who said that? They're oh, my word. All right, let's go to the next one. Welcome to my first episode of my new game. Oh, yeah. Welcome to an episode of women bashing men. Why are you single? Where are you yeah, why are you single? How much you want to bet she's single also? You know, uh, nope, I'm not even going to say it. You know that this is a single woman. She's going to bash men and their dating profiles. But let's... Let's be real. She's single herself, and I think we'll all see why. Just listen to her. You tell me why you think this person's single. Just a warning, it's a very difficult game. Please join me in welcoming Caleb. Woo! Trigger warning. Okay, when these girls try to be funny, it's it never is funny. It just is, like, awkward and pathetic and stupid. Um, and it's never original, too. You know, uh, this, uh, let's give... I think everyone should give props to Caleb. This is an epic dating profile. I love it. He's trolling all these dumb bitches. And by the way, the reason she's so triggered by this and why she doesn't like this is because she knows it's true. He's literally describing her. Yeah, you don't like that, do you? How every good dating profile starts. Let me guess, you're 25 with three kids and you've done had your fun, now you don't want that. You want a real man to settle down with and take care of you and your kids because you let a loser mm, inside you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right for a lot of these insane women. I've seen so many videos of these young women, well, not young anymore, these women that are hitting the wall that are like 30 years old, they have a couple kids, the, the baby daddy's nowhere to be found and they're like, oh shit. I need to find a man to, to support me and take care of me. Yes, that's right. Ah! I'm six foot even. Oh, wow. Well, then you can say whatever you want to anyone, King. Continue. Yeah, he says that because all these women say in their little dating profiles, I'm only interested in men six foot or taller. It's your own disgusting beauty standards. Have my own house, two vehicles, and I make over 75K a year. What do you bring to the table? Caleb sugar plum are you trying to say that your height and having two cars is bringing something to the table because it's not what do you bring to the table besides a ridiculous sense of humor you're not even funny like there's nothing attractive about this woman at all if the answer is someone else's kids then go kick rocks no man will ever want you <laughs> that's true and it's hilarious okay well i don't think that you speak for all men i don't like classify you as a man caleb more of like a poopy pan baby stop saying you're thick my thick what you're obese no i think that's hilarious all of these girls who call themselves thick what they really mean is fat my obese what oh my god caleb thank god you're here i've been waiting for your take on my body also if your whole thing is going to be like being mentally superior at least be like kind of smart you know what I mean? Also, you're not a dog. Well, if your thing is being funny, at least be kind of funny. You know what I mean? Mom, you're a pet owner. What a stupid, innocuous thing to be upset about. <laughs> no, it's it's annoying. I hate these women that refer to themselves as cat moms or dog moms. It is obnoxious. So you tell me, why do you think Caleb's single? How do you even know he's single? What if he's just out here trolling you guys? Why are you single? I think we all know. The next one. We had sex. He goes, um, I was like, oh, oh, the female comedian. Because you can't have a female comedian without them talking about their vagina. That is literally all they can come up with. They have nothing original. They have nothing funny to say. It's just, oh, hey, guys, I have a vagina. <laughs> that was great. And he goes, I know. Um, babe, so here's the thing, like, you can wax all this. <laughs> okay, why is that funny? You know, the people laughing, that's like her family or something, her, f her few friends that came to see this, or people just feel really awkward about the disgusting things she's talking about, so they're, it's like a nervous laughter. 
<laughs> I was like, what? Like, and he goes, yeah. And he's like, I was like, all of it? And he goes, yeah. And I was like, well, who's doing that? And he's like, everybody but you, pretty much. <laughs> and when I was in my 30s or in my 20s, I would have been mortified. Like, I would have been like, oh my God, he doesn't like my and then he doesn't like me. Oh, ha, ha, guys, so funny. She said vagina. I would have freaked out. My whole week would have been shot. And now I'm an old mom and I say mom. And I'm like, you don't like it? Don't eat it. That's disgusting. It's not funny. It's atrocious. And if I were her kids, I'd be so embarrassed by her. This old boomer woman screeching about her vagina. And by the way, where's the father of your kids? I, clearly, you're a single mom. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, you're getting the same fucking thing tomorrow. <laughs> oh, so funny. So original. I mean... I, nothing more needs to be said. Moving on to the next one. It's 1.47 a.m. I just got home from a date. Here we have again the, the female need to broadcast every little thing that happens to you on the internet for everybody to see. Why she thought anyone needed to hear this about her personal life is beyond me, but for some reason, some of these women feel the need to broadcast every single fucking thing that happens to them and put it out there for the entire world to see. It is bizarre. But you have to ask yourself, um, what, what is she, what kind of man is she going on dates with? Because I get the feeling that there's more to this story. And, um, clearly didn't go well. Um, this was our second date. We've talked for a few weeks. Um, we got along really well. The first date went really good. We, like, talked about everything we're both looking for like a serious something whatever whatever we go on the second day it's going really well he tells me he has to leave because he's dog sitting for his parents he's like you know you can come back to their house if you want we can hang out for a little bit whatever and i let him know like mm, i don't know how i feel about that like i mean like coming over to your parents house or like your house kind of like has expectations that i don't really want because i don't want to sleep with you anytime soon like I'm just not interested in, like, hooking. Oh, I'm not that kind of girl. <laughs> okay, sure. Is there Was there anything you did that made him think that you were that kind of girl? And she admits it herself. It's 1.30 in the morning when she's recording this video. So what time of night was it? How late was it that you went over to this dude's house? You knew what that was. You knew you were being invited to a booty call. And then you showed up and acted like you didn't think that's what it was that it's obvious that's what it was I'm not for like putting out that easy and so i don't know and he's like well we don't have to do anything like that's totally fine if you just want to like come over and we can hang out watch a movie whatever <laughs> and i'm like uh i don't know okay so but I, she like, did it send my roommate his address because i'm just always paranoid and we get there and like his little brother's there so i'm like oh, okay it's gonna be fine and like whatever we like go downstairs because i guess that's like where we have to hang out and we like put on a movie and whatever and then we're like hanging out making out whatever it's fine that's fine and he like tries to make me like touch him and i'm like oh no i'm not comfortable with that he's like why it's not that big of a deal and he like continues to try to like, like force my hand down i'm like no thank you i'm okay no thank you i'm okay um, nobody, no one's forcing her to be there. She showed up at this dude's parents' house in the middle of the fucking night. Like, like, come on. What did you think you were being invited there for? Let's be honest. Let's move on to the next one because she's just talking out her ass here. Number one question to ask on every date to see if you're actually comp- Oh, this is real weird. This is the kind of girl who I guess is trying to be- quirky and charming and funny and it just comes off as absolutely bizarre and awkward. Compatible. Genetic engineers at John Hopkins University have developed a so-called super gorilla. Though the gorilla cannot speak, it has a sign language lexicon of over 12,000 words, an IQ of almost 85, and most notably a vague sense of self-awareness. The creature, who weighs 700 pounds, oddly becomes fascinated with football. The gorilla aspires to play the game at its highest level and quickly develops the rudimentary skills of a defensive end. ESPN analyst Tom Jackson speculates that this gorilla would be borderline unblockable and likely would average six sacks per game, although Jackson concedes that the beast might be susceptible to 
counters and misdirection plays. Meanwhile, the gorilla has made it abundantly clear that he would never intentionally injure an opponent. You're the commissioner of the NFL. Would you allow this gorilla to sign with the Oakland Raiders? Okay. Um, I, that was just weird. And again, not funny. My seven years of dating since my divorce. Okay, so here we have a divorced woman who's been dating for seven years. But she's going to give you dating advice. I have learned a thing or two. I'm about to hurt some feelings. Don't allow a man to tell you twice that he don't want you. If you feel confused about how he feels about you, he don't want you. If you feel that something is off, it is off. Whatever he has with his ex, make sure that's cleaned the fuck up because people are messy out here. If he shows you his true colors, believe him. Don't try to rationalize his dusty ass behavior. A man can never make you feel whole. That's an inside job. He's just an add-on. Just because you're thirsty, don't drink that poison. AKA, don't go back to your ex. He didn't change. Oh my goodness. That, yeah. Just, um, kind of self-explanatory. And to the final one. This is why I can't find a- <laughs> This is so atrocious. I honestly didn't want to put this in here, but here we go. Just look at this woman's behavior. This is why I can't find a boyfriend. And she thinks this is funny. She's not going to think it's funny when she's approaching 30. Boyfriend. <laughs> this is so disgusting. Um, what woman behaves like this? This is not classy. This is not respectable. It's disgusting behavior. <laughs> Wow. Just wow. I this woman has no respect for herself. Why would anybody respect her? And of course she doesn't have a boyfriend. This is who who would want to date this? Why I can't find a boyfriend. Just look at that. I mean, honestly, I don't know. Um I don't know what to, what to make of this. You guys can tell me what you think about this in the comments section below. Uh, I It just really, it's stunning to me that this is how women behave nowadays. This is like the behavior of the modern woman. Um, it's just midwit nonsense. Like it's unattractive, it's disgusting, it's not cute. It's not funny. I don't know why anyone would want to be around these women. It is unsurprising that so many of them are unmarried, childless uh, freaks. Anyways, that's my thoughts on this TikTok women cringe compilation video.